Hey guys, we are live. Just waiting for people to come in. Are you guys in? Oh yeah, thanks Dragon. You please have a nice day at work. Just waiting just a second. Is my audio clear? Just needed to check that. Okay, so we'll just begin, shall we? Okay, notifications off. Welcome. I'm just waiting for people to join in. QMAC, good to see you. God bless you, brother. God bless you, Valerian. Good to see you too. The audio is loud and clear, isn't it? Okay, this is my third live stream. I'm just waiting for a few more people to show up and then I'll just begin. Shalom, shalom, Mark. Shalom, Jeremy. No worries, Jeremy. Can understand you did say that you had a thing. Hey, CCDV, good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, I'll probably keep this live stream not too long. I'll try to end it within an hour because I've got work the next day. So we'll just pray a bit for this live stream and just see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for giving this opportunity to expose this charlatan, Shabir Ali. Help me, Lord, to bring to light all his lies, all his false arguments, and to edify people who are gathered for this live stream. Bless them, Lord. Keep them safe. Hear their prayers. And save us from sin, Lord. We also pray that uh, to keep us free from any technological issues and to keep me from erring in this live stream with the power of your spirit. We make this prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so just checking. How many of you have actually watched the debate between Anthony Rogers and Shabir Ali? That was the second debate. Uh, what was it? Salvation according to the Quran. I'll just, uh, I mean, sorry, the salvation according to the Bible. I'll just drop the link here in the description box. Here you go. I'll just share. Give me a second. Sharing the screen. Share screen. Share the audio. Tie screen. Got it. Hey guys, can you see my screen? I'm using StreamYard, so there is a bit of a delay. Oh, that's okay, notifications off. I'll go through it. It's actually from the 27th minute onwards, where Shabir Ali tries to play the scientist, and he ends up bashing his own Quran. All right. Can you guys? Okay, cool. I'll just check the audio. Oral. For example, the idea that life is in the blood. I know this is stated in the Old Testament, but can you hear the audio? The New Testament writers believe good? that. Nowadays, we know. Okay, all right. So I'm starting around the 27 minute to a 20 second mark, and we'll just go through it a bit by bit, just to destroy this guy. That if you get a, a blood transfusion, it doesn't mean that. Of course, you're you're going to be living a bit bit longer because as uh, instead of dying without uh, the blood transfusion, but the life itself. All good, Q Mark. Good to hear. The audio is good. Okay, so now here comes the fun part. Life is not uh, in the blood. The life is in every cell of the body, and uh, that brings us to another question about the pre-scientific uh, view that gave rise to this idea, like Paul thinking that Adam was the first. Man did you hear that, folks? He thinks that Paul was pre-scientific, therefore he thinks Adam was the first man. Thank you, Shabir. You're destroying your own Quran, and you're saying that your own God, your own prophet, is also a liar. Man. Nowadays, scientists will not say that Adam was the first man. Like, 
There he goes appealing to scientists. What we think about when we think of man, if we think Homo sapiens, then Homo sapiens go back to about 200,000 uh, years. And uh, some would think that uh, Adam maybe was not even the Homo, Homo sapien. Maybe he was a Homo erectus. In any case, even if we say Homo sapien, uh, then as we trace... Uh... <laughs> Does this guy have any idea what he's talking about? <laughs> our genes back, uh, you know, we realized that there was never a time when there was only one man and uh, one woman. That okay. So now he is coming to a point where Shabi just doesn't, oh, good to see you, Adam, just doesn't freaking believe that there was just one man and one woman. He's just bashing his own Quran. Could be called human. They were part of a community that would have comprised some seven to, to 10,000 uh, people. We can there he goes. So he's saying that at one particular time that there were 7,000 to 10,000 people because of which we have different genes. Now, this is just this consensus of some of the scientific community. Don't take it for granted. There are other people in the scientific community who actually argue that now we actually come from one person, from one human couple. There is also evidence to show that there is a mitochondrial Adam and a mitochondrial Eve. So can say that God chose one, and the Islamic view is that God chose Adam. Okay, here he lies. He's saying that God chose Adam. Did I pronounce it right? I'll just come to that. What passage is actually quoting? God chose him. Chose him. So he must have been part of the community for God to choose him from out of that community and uh, to make. So he's saying God chose Adam to be a prophet out of a community of probably 7,000, 10,000, or maybe more people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> became a prophet to preach to, uh, to the others. Then the question is about why this uh, earth? They have a question about location. So he's coming to the earth, but first let me just dismantle this charlatan's argument. Okay. So I'm just going to our very favorite Quran browser. and. Uh, what should I start with? Uh, just a minute. Just a second, guys. Just need to get organized. I just kept the verses ready. I think it was Quran 4 1, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, here we go. So, in this Quran browser, it's a gift. It's actually answering Islam's Quran browser, owned by Sam, Shamoon, and all the others. You can get whatever translation you want. You won't see Sahih Bukhari. You can also see the Arabic translation. So if I'm just choosing one translation, your Piktal for one. This is his Quran. This is his own Quran. Oh, mankind, be careful of your duty to your Lord who created you from a single soul and from, from it created its mate and from them twain had spread abroad a multitude of men and women. I'll pick something simpler like Hilali Khan. O oh, mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person, Adam, and from him, Adam, he created his wife, Hawa, or Eve, and from them both he created many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. Remember, whatever is inside brackets, it's not in the original Arabic of the Quran. These are just assertions they have made. But still, it's enough to say that Shabir just lied through his face. And he just bashed his Quran and his prophet. He called his prophet a liar. He called his God a liar. He called his book as a fraud. Anyway, let's continue now to his next argument. Um. You know, the, our earth is uh, just a small part of our galaxy. Oh, not, I'm not yet done, Adam. <laughs> I decimate him point by point. Now he's saying that our earth is just... Make him a prophet to preach to, uh, to the others. Then the question is about why this uh, earth? They have a question about location. Um, you know, the, our earth is uh, just a small part of our galaxy, which is one part, a small part of the universe. It's in a suburb. Now, from an evolutionary bio biologist, Sabir Ali has suddenly become an astrophysic uh, astrophysicist. Just, just see that. <laughs> From an Islamic apologist, he turned into an evolutionary bio biologist, and within the same minute, he suddenly become an astrophysicist. 
Like if the son of God is going to come to do something so major, um, why would he do it here on this earth? A uh, question for you, Shabir. Why do you care about the Quran and Muhammad? Why was Muhammad sent to earth then? Why couldn't he be sent off to some alien planet? <laughs> why? As opposed to, uh, let's say, uh, you know, in, in the center of the, of the galaxy, even if we can think about the center of the, of the galaxy. And if Jesus comes to our galaxy to die, what about other galaxies? They could... <laughs> why is Muhammad's revelation the final revelation, according to you? The other Earths out there uh, with intelligent life similar to other to ours, people may have. Do you have any proof for that? There are other Earths out there, intelligent life similar similar to ours, maybe even more intelligent. That's just hypothesis. Just for the record, the probability of you finding intelligent life similar to ours is far far lesser than the actual probability of, say, Jesus arising from the dead. People who have investigated Jesus' resurrection, some of them, some of our noted Christian apologists, like, say, J. Warner Wallace, who's an atheist, who used to be an atheist, who's become a Christian, and a lot of others, they say that the odds of Jesus rising from the dead are really highly probable given the evidence. And if you're going to look at the odds of finding life on another planet, just intelligent life in this universe, given the constraints of this universe, it's really, 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 really low. It's like 10 raised to God knows minus 1000th power or something, which is like nothing. Nothing. I've been committing sins in, on the other star, stars and planets. And uh, uh, in that case, they too, if this is the only solution, if only blood is going to satisfy God, uh, is the death of Jesus on this earth sufficient for all of the creatures on every planet, on every galaxy, everywhere? I, I would like Anthony to comment uh, upon that. For okay, about this objection, just for you Christians, you might just be wondering, is that possible? Even if we do have life on other planets, I don't believe that we have life on other planets. It's all bogus fantasies made up by people and conspiracy theories and God knows what. I don't believe in that. But just say, hypothetically, if we assume there's life on another planet, does Jesus redeem that? Yes, he does. So if I'm going to say John 1 first, let's get the thing clear. John 1. We'll just go to John 1 first. You know this, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. He's talking about Jesus Christ. You all know that. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Okay, so Jesus created everything, the heavens, the earths, the planets, the galaxies, all life. Okay, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So, the word of God created everything, universe, all creation. I'll just go to First Corinthians 8.6, quickly. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we live. Once again, Jesus created everything. He's Lord of all creation. Okay, now which brings me to this point. Uh, Colossians 1. Colossians 1, uh, 16 to 20. Here we go. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, again, or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Okay? For it pleased the Father that in 
him that is in Jesus Christ all the fullness should dwell and by Jesus Christ to reconcile all things to himself by him whether things on earth now watch this point or things in heaven having made peace to the blood of his cross so there we go okay so Jesus pretty much redeems all of creation be it an alien or whatever even if they do exist Anyway, let's continue. There was one more objection which he had kind of lied about. I'll just go back a Very little bit. Issue. So, in, uh, let's say uh, you know, uh, God chose him, chose him. So he must have been part of the community for God to choose him from out of that community and uh, to make him a prophet to preach to uh, to the others. And then the question is about why this uh, earth? Just a second. One man and uh, one woman that could be called human. They were part of a community that uh, would have comprised some seven to, to 10,000 uh, people. We can say that God chose one. And the Islamic view is that God chose Adam. Now here he's lying that God was chosen, that, that Adam was chosen as one of many. This is nonsense. We'll just use his own Quran. And by the way, Shabir Ali doesn't want to quote hadiths in, in these two debates. He just wants to say that he is a Quran only Muslim. So fine, I'll just use his own standards being a Quran only Muslim. All right, so we'll come to Quran chapter number two, verse number 30 to 38. This has got to do with the creation of Adam. I've just put that thing over there. So coming to Pictal. And when I, okay, I'll just read the simpler translation. And remember when your Lord said to the angels, verily, I'm going to place mankind generations after generations on earth. They said, will you place therein those who will make mischief therein and shed blood while we glorify you with praises and thanks? I'm not reading the part in the brackets. Then Allah said, I know which you do not know. And he taught Adam all the names of everything. And he showed, the, showed them to the angels and said, tell me the names of these if you are truthful. Okay. The angel said, glory be to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Verily, it is you, the all-knower, the all-wise. He said, Allah said, O Adam, inform them of their names. So he's telling Adam to inform the angels of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, did I not tell you that I know the gaib unseen in the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you have been concealing. And remember when we said to the angels, again, majestic plural, prostrate yourselves before Adam, the so-called majestic plural. Now, why is Allah talking in the plural? This is not the majestic plural, which they want to say. The majestic plural is just made up nonsense. Uh, the Islam Arabic during Muhammad's time didn't have the majestic plural. It came probably after British influence. Okay. So, prostrate yourselves before Adam. So, here, they are these angels are committing shirk. Okay, Allah is telling them to worship Adam. And they prostrated before Adam, except Iblis or Satan. He refused and was proud and was one of the disbelievers, disobedient to Allah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> names of angels or trees or animals or what? I don't know, Adam Seeker. The text doesn't tell me. <laughs> I'll have to probably read a tafsir to say what it actually means. <laughs> Adam naming the angels. Uh, the, the <laughs> I remember when he said to the angels, prostrate yourselves before Adam. Okay, fine. 235. O oh Adam, dwell you and your wife in the paradise and eat both of you freely with pleasure and delight of things therein as wherever you will. But come not near this tree, or you both will be of the Salimun wrongdoers, or Salim, as we say in Urdu. Okay. So they are not even mentioned over here which tree. Is it the tree of knowledge or the tree of life? I'll come to that because they have made another blunder over here. Which tree is he talking about? Then the shaitan, Iblis or Satan, made them slip there from the paradise and got them out from there in which they were. We said, get you down all with enmity between yourselves. On earth will be a dwelling place for you and an enjoyment for a time. 
then adam received words from his lord and his lord pardoned him accept accepted his repentance verily he is the one who forgives accepts repentance the merciful we said get down all of you from this place to paradise then wherever that comes to you guidance from me and whoever follows my guidance there shall be no fear on them nor shall they grieve now over here it doesn't actually state that this paradise of theirs the so called fake paradise actually was on earth i'll prove it to you that this paradise which they are talking about was actually on heaven <laughs> this islamic garden or whatever it was was actually in heaven it wasn't on earth i'll come to that shortly but coming to shabir ali what verse he was actually quoting was this one when he was talking about adam but the context was not talking about adam it was actually talking about jonah that was chapter 68 verses 48 to 50 i'll read uh, arbery or uh, sorry i'll read palma but wait patiently for the judgment of thy lord and be not like the fellow of the fish fellow of the fish any kindergarten christian will be able to tell you that if you're talking about fish a person associated with fish it could be jonah when he cried out as he was choking with rage had it not been that grace from his lord reached him he would have been cast out on the naked shore and blamed the while but his lord elected him and made him of the pious so in the other translation but his lord has chosen him and he placed him among the righteous <laughs> but his lord chose him and placed him among the righteous <laughs> yes yes adam seeker you are right <laughs> oh man i'm so daif when it comes to islam i'm a daif kufar what can i say adam but as lord chose him and placed him among the righteous and this is the nonsense shabir ali was quoting this is about jona what makes you say this is about jona i'm going to the tafsir over here alam.org i'll just drop that tafsir about this verse so this is ibn kathir so a tafsir is islamic commentary which is authoritative islamic commentary exegesis made by islamic scholars early islamic scholars okay if shabir is lying over here by default shabir is a heretic when it comes to islam okay so what's it saying so this is the same verse so wait with patience for the decision of your lord and be not like the companion of the fish when he cried out to us again allah is in the plural to us the many allahs while he was maqsoob had not a grace from his lord reached him he would have indeed been left in the stomach of the fish but we forgave him so he cast off on the naked shore while he was to be blamed so here this part in the brackets is giving us context that this is jona it's not adam then his lord chose him and made him of the righteous there we go and verily those who disbelieve would almost make you slip with their eyes through hatred when they hear the reminder the quran and they say verily he is a madman but this is nothing else than the reminder of all the creatures allah me so so wait with patience so muhammad persevere against the harm your people cause you and their rejection for verily allah will give you authority over them and make the final victory for you and their followers in this life and the hereafter so this is the commentary and it's talking about yunus so yunus is actually the prophet jona in islam that's the name so this is allah talking to muhammad so this is the commentary of ibn kathir one of the authoritarian authoritative commentators okay scholars and shabir is just going against that followers in the year after and not be like the companion of the fish meaning dunnun who was yunus bin mata that is jo jo that is jona son of mata in the old testament it is i think his father's name is amiata or amata or something can't exactly recollect on the top of the head when he went off angry with his people various things happened to him such as riding on the ship at sea being swallowed by a large fish the fish carrying him off into the ocean being in the darkness and depth of the sea and hearing the seas and its dwellers glorification of the most high the most able allah for he allah is the one whose execution of divine decree cannot be resisted and of all of this he yunus called out from the layers of darkness that none has the right to be worshiped but you o allah glorified and exalted are you truly have been of the wrong doers then allah said concerning him so we called us call and delivered him from the darkness again allah is plural many allahs 
and thus we do deliver the believers. Also, Allah says, had he not been of them who glorified Allah, he would have indeed remained inside its belly, the fish, till the day when they are resurrected. So here in the surah, Allah says, when he cried out to us while he was maksum, Ibn Abbas Mujahid and As-Sudi all said, while he was distressed, and Allah goes on to say, then his Lord chose him and made him of the righteous. Imam Ahmad recorded from Abdullah, the messenger of Allah said, there's another scholar. It is not befitting for anyone to say that I'm better than Jonah, son of Mata. Al-Bukhari, another scholar, recorded this hadith, and it is in the two sahis, Sahih hadiths people, reported from Abu Huraira concerning Allah's statement. And verily, those who disbelieve would almost make up your slip with your eyes, Ibn Abbas Mujahid, and others have said, more commentators. <laughs> so here we go on and on and on and on. And Shabir is just, you know, giving his own head cannon here. God chose him, chose him. So he must have been part of the community for God to choose him from out of that community and uh, to make him a prophet to preach to uh, to the others. Then the question is about why this uh, earth? Okay, so I'll just pull out some more verses in the Quran to bash Shabir. Okay. Concerning this thing. So four one was one of them. Now six ninety-eight. Quran six ninety-eight. And he it is who made you spring from one soul and gave you a settlement and a depository. Now have we detailed the science unto a people who discern. And the exposition is kind of better given on in Hilali Khan of this verse. It is he who has created from you a single person. Again, Shabir's evolutionary theology has thrown and has given you a place of residing on the earth or in your mother's wombs and a place of storage in the earth, in your graves or in your father's loins. Indeed, we have explained in our detail our revelations, this Quran for people to understand. So next verse is Quran 30 verse 20. All right. And among his signs is this, that he created you, Adam, from dust, and then Hawa, Eve, from Adam's rib, and then his offspring from the semen, and behold, you are human beings scattered. So again, it's saying, this Quran says that, if, that all, all of mankind just comes from one single couple. And this guy, to attack the Bible, he's talking about pre-scientific views, and Paul said this, and Paul said that. Oh, wow, Shabir. <laughs> I'm really surprised that this guy is alive and still doing apologetics for Islam. <laughs> By now, I don't know, people would have had his head for yakking this nonsense. <laughs> oh, yeah, Adam Seeker. By the way, Kevin Lewis is my brother, my real brother. He's actually sitting in the other room and listening. <laughs> okay. And among the signs is this. That he created for you wives from among them. That's that's the next verse, Surah 30, verse 21. That you may find repose in them and that he has put between you affection and mercy. Verily, in that are indeed signs for a people who reflect. And again, another verse from about Adam's creation. And Allah did create you, Adam, from dust. Then from Nufta, male and female discharge semen drops, that is Adam's drops offspring. <laughs> then he made you pairs, male and female, and no female conceives or gives birth, but with Allah's knowledge. And no aged man is granted a length of life, nor is a part cut out from his life or another man's life, but is in a book. Allah al mafi surely that is easy for Allah to say. So again, Shabir has destroyed himself. Okay, now I'll just skip over to the 41st minute mark. Where shall we still look at the You know, the, our Earth is uh, just a small part of our galaxy, which is one part, a small part of the. Um, in that case, they too, if this is the only solution, if only blood is significant precisely because the Son of God came to die here. But that's okay, I've come to the 41st minute. Circular reasoning, because the question is, why did he die here as opposed to somewhere else? And uh, moreover, uh, you know. Again, question for you. Why were the prophets sent over here as opposed to somewhere else? Why was Muhammad sent over here as opposed to so? Somewhere else. Why was the uncreated word of Allah, supposedly the Quran, which is uncreated, distinct from Allah, sent here? 
revealed over here on Earth as opposed to some alien planet. Why is that? You know, is his death here sufficient for the entire universe? If there are other Earth, uh, Earth like ours, if there are other Earthlings like our people, and if they are susceptible to sin as as well, you cannot say, okay, so he died here, and that means that the Earth is special, because that circular reasoning it's assuming the very thing which you needed to answer. Uh, and you say that, uh, yeah, Shabir says he believes in in Christ, but he doesn't believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, do we actually have the gospel of Jesus Christ, or do we have what Paul called his gospel? Didn't he say that Jesus died? Did you hear that? Now, this is some objection which all these. Uh, Muslim apologists, Muslim clerics just bring up with, they just want to attack Paul again and again and again and again, saying that Paul invented Christianity. All these assertions are again even coming from, say, rabbinic Judaism as well. Uh, for according to his gospel. And uh, what about John updating Jesus? You say there are I am statements in Mark as well, but not of the same quality. Just a second. About Paul, let's see what early Islamic commentators have to say about Paul. I'll just drop this in StreamYard quickly. Here we go. That's one of Sam's articles. I'll just read a few of them about what they have to say about Paul. This is, this is the name of the article. The Apostle Paul in Early Islamic Exegesis. What early Islamic scholars thought about Paul. Okay. So these are like the equivalent of what we would call church fathers in Christianity, these guys, rather the fake church fathers. There are at least over 20 tafsirs, 20 commentaries on Paul being a genuine, genuine apostle. Tafsir al-Quran al-Adim by Ibn Abi Hatim, written 327 years after the Hajj. That is roughly, say, in the 900s. Nine, 950 AD approximately. Okay. So Shoaib al Jabai said, the names of the two messengers where it is said, we send them are Simon and John, and the name of the third is Paul. From Shoaib al Jabai, Jabai, he said, the name of the messengers who said, when we have sent them two are Simon, that's Peter and John, and the name of the third is Paul. Okay. Darju al Darar fi Tafsir al Ai Wal Suwar al Durjani, that is written about 471 years after the Hijra by Abu Bakr Abad al Khari. Okay, so coming over here, the people of the city, the people of Antioch. This is narrated by Katada and Ikrima from Tabri and Tafsir 19, chapter 19, verse probably 413, and Abdul Razak and his Tafsir 2140. When he sent of them two of the region of Asa upon him, they are Thomas and Paul. So again, over here, they are acknowledging that Paul was an apostle. Okay. And another guy. Mulam al-Anzil for Tafsir al-Quran, Tafsir al-Baghavi, written about 500 years after the time of Muhammad. Again, quite early, if you're considering their sources. When we sent to them too, but they denied them. So we strengthened them with a third and they said, indeed, we are messengers to you. And this is the exegesis of Quran 36 verse 14. So according to Quran 36 verse 14, that verse, they are saying that talking about John and Paul. When he sent to them too, Wahab said their names are John and Paul, but they denied them. So we strengthened them means we strengthened with the third and the third messenger and he was Simon. So there you go. And Abu Bakr read from Asim. So we strengthened them by alleviating, which is in the first sense. Such as you are seeing, we have emphasized and stressed by reducing and strengthening. And it is said, we have overcome their words from the best of court. And Kaab said, the two prophets are Sadiq and Sadak, and the third is Shalom. But Allah added them sending to them because Isa upon him peace, Isa, the counterfeit Islamic Jesus, sent them by his command of Allah. And they said, of all them to the people of Antioch, indeed we are messengers to you. So early Islamic commentators are confirming that Paul was a disciple, a messenger. And all of them are giving the same exegesis about this thing. <laughs> and you can actually look for that article over there in the description box below, and you'll get all links throughout the ages. This is something very consistent. Okay, let's get back to him.
Now, what else is he spewing out? This guy, Shabir Ali. Not where Jesus is making this declaration, I am the bread of life. I'm there he goes, blaspheming again. He's blaspheming our Lord again, this guy. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the good shepherd. Uh, I and the Father are one. Uh, before Abraham was, I am. Where do you find these statements in the Synoptic Gospels? You don't. And hence... Okay, so he's saying that you don't find these statements about Jesus's being Jesus being divine in the Synoptic Gospels. That is, these are the same stupid claims like which modern liberal scholars and secularists make that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there is nothing very explicit about Jesus being God. But since John was written some 60 years later, then the claims start coming that Jesus is God and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'll just, you know, destroy his argument. He's saying there's nothing explicit about I am statements in these Gospels. Okay, fine. Let's come to Mark 14 first. Mark 14, for instance. So just a second, I'll just see. Hence, uh, scholars like uh, uh, James Dunn find that incredible. They think that these are not original statements of Jesus. And you say uh, that Bart Ehrman does not know what he's talking about. Uh, I and the Father are one. Uh, before Abraham was, I am. Where do you find these statements in the Synoptic Gospels? You don't. And hence, uh, scholars like uh, uh, James Dunn find that incredible. They think James Dunn is a heretic, by the way. So please don't listen to him all these so-called scholars coming out of the church. It's there in all our communities, whether it's Catholic or Protestant communities or whatever. You have all these secular liberal scholars going who do more damage than good. And they just yak all kinds of nonsense to begin with. Their Christology is all screwed up and it's all over the place. And they just want the recognition in their universities. I will go with the interpretation of the church fathers any day. People who gave their lives to preserve the scripture, to preserve the word of God especially in the first few centuries when Christianity was under persecution, rather than these guys sitting with their fat packages, with their privileges at universities and enjoying the love of the world. I think that these are not original statements of Jesus. And you say uh, that Bart Ehrman does not know what he's talking about? I mean, like, I mean... FYI, Bart Ehrman actually admits in his blog that uh, Jesus is divine. Even in the first three Gospels, this is an admission he made some sometime very recent, uh, sometime in 2018 or 2019, I think. And uh, if you want to access his blog, you can just go to Bart Ehrman's own blog, but you'll have to pay for it to read the full article. I'll just put that in the description box after the video, God willing. I mean, I, 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 would, I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't, you know, Bart Ehrman is uh, a reputable scholar. I do not believe anything, everything that he says. I'm a Muslim. He's okay. Let's come to Mark 14. I'm just using the New King James Version. Oh, what verse was it? Uh, what was the verse, man? Just a second. So Jesus got arrested. So it's around that point of time. Yeah. When he's getting questioned by the high priest. Okay. So after Jesus got arrested, he got. God, God, sorry. He was brought before the Sanhedrin, the chief priest, the Jewish elders, the high priest, and whatnot. And uh, the chief priest and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death and found none. And remember, this is Mark's gospel, Mark's gospel, supposedly the gospel which has very low Christology or statements which doesn't actually assert that Jesus is God. Let me destroy Shabir over here right now. Hey, welcome, Solus. God bless you. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies, but they did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false testimonies against Jesus, saying, We heard Jesus say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I'll build another made without hands. But not even then, but not even then did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked Jesus, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Now here you go. Jesus said, 
I am. There you go. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? Now, why was the high priest furious? Because not just Jesus, Jesus made so many claims over here in this one line. In this one line, he said, I am. He said, I am God. I'll come to that, but for you guys know that. And then he's talking about the Son of Man. Now, what is the Son of Man business? And then he's also talking about sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Okay. He made many claims over here. He at least made three or four big divine claims and all prophetic claims. And for a high priest, it looked very incredible. For this, I'll just give you a bit of exposition. So when he's talking about the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power, let's go to Daniel 7. So in Daniel 7, Daniel actually sees a vision of heaven. Okay. He actually sees the vision of heaven. Hey, welcome, Asher Benjamin. Good to see you. God bless you. And over there, he actually sees God's throne. He sees the angels the seraphim and whatnot and now vision of the ancient of days now this is the daniel having a vision in heaven the prophet daniel i watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated his garment was white as snow so he's talking about god the father taking up some kind of a form okay which which he can comprehend and the hair of his head was like pure wool his throne was a fiery flame its wheels a burning fire a fiery steam issued and came forth from before him. A thousand, thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Obviously the angels and the hosts in heaven. The court was seated and the books were opened. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So it's kind of talking about the same beast you will come across again in Revelation. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I was watching in the night visions again, and behold, one like the Son of Man. So Jesus is saying, I mean, this is Daniel say, seeing somebody like the Son of Man, that is somebody in the likeness of a human being. But he's saying one like the Son of Man, someone having the likeness of a human being, which means someone who is could be even be more than that coming with the clouds of heavens okay coming with the clouds of heaven now that's what jesus said in mark 14 you will see the son of man coming at the right hand of the power on the clouds of heaven now take a note of this folks this line clouds of heaven okay he came to the ancient of days and they brought him before him okay now this thing clouds of heaven daniel 7 so Let's go to Deuteronomy 33, 26 to 29. Now, who writes the clouds of heaven? There is no one like the God of Jeshurun who writes the heavens to help you and is His Excellency on the clouds. So there he is, His Excellency on the clouds. So this is God writing the clouds of heaven. All right. Another place where you could say that would be Psalm 68. Verse 4, now who writes the clouds of heaven? Sing to God, sing praises to his name, extol him who writes on the clouds by his name Yahweh and rejoice before him, okay, who rides on the clouds. So technically speaking, now Daniel is kind of looking at something which looks like a human being and who is riding the clouds of heaven and is approaching God. So there is a human being who is God, who is approaching God seated on the throne. All right. So this is the claim Jesus is making over here. And they brought him and they brought the son of man near before him. Two capital M's. The son of man near the one seated on the throne. That is the father. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. 
Okay, so so why did the Pharisee, I mean the high priest, get furious? Now you see, in the Jewish temple, you have the holy of holies, where the priest, the high priest, has to go every year, every year. Now in the holy of holies, they used to think, you know. I mean, they not they did not used to think it was God having His actual presence over there. So every year, the priest used to go to offer and confess people's sins every year, once in a year. But if the priest goes inside the holy of holies and he, if he is in a state of sin or some uncleanliness, then God would strike him dead because just to approach God over there in His uh, in His throne throne on earth you had to be pretty pure to do that all right uh so so in the levitical law on the priest's legs they used to tie a rope so just in case if they didn't see the priest coming out after a long time then they know that the priest is dead so they'll just use the rope to pull the priest's body body out in case if he dies so over here caiaphas the high priest is really mad because him, the high priest, he has to be in a state of purity and that to just once in a year, he can just enter the tabernacle of God in the Holy of Holies, the tabernacle which is on earth, which is actually the shadow of the tabernacle in heaven, which is God's throne. And Jesus is claiming that he is the son of man who has the power of God since he rides on the clouds of heaven and he can come before God at all times. That too, not in not not in his earthly tabernacle there, which is in the temple, but in but in the heavenly throne itself. The audacity for a human being to say all these things. So he's claiming he's God. He's the Son of Man who's prophesied, and he's also got the and he's actually the real high priest. So just imagine that is like a slap on Caiaphas's face. And this I'm just quoting this from the Gospel of Mark which people claim is like low Christology. This is just nonsense. If you guys just know your theology right, your Old Testament theology right, the way the apostles and the church fathers viewed it, I mean, this is what it is. Shabir Ali, get out of here. What nonsense is that? Seriously. So you could just see the reaction here the, the, these guys had. Uh, coming back here. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, what further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Why deserving of death? Because he blasphemed God by claiming to be God and by claiming to be so many other things at the same time. The real high priest, the son of man, the prophesied son of man, the Messiah, so many things. Just Not, not just by saying that, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed in that sense? There you go. And that's why they did that. And same thing like in, I think it's Matthew. I think it's 27 or 26. I'll just say that's a parallel passage there. Okay, it's Matthew 26. Oh, hi. Okay. Control F, I priest. Yeah, same passage, Matthew 26. And he's asking the same question here. And the high priest arose and said to him, do you answer nothing? What is it these, these men testify against you concerning these accusations? But Jesus kept silence. And the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are Christ, the son of God. So he's kind of putting him under oath. So technically, even Jesus, since he is a just man, the one who fulfills the law, he won't you know, take God's name in vain by lying over here. This is some detail you have in Matthew, which is not there in Mark. Jesus said to him, it is as you said, nevertheless, nevertheless I say to you, hereafter you'll see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. So even Matthew's gospel says that. When the high priest tore his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have of witnesses? Look now, you have heard this blasphemy. What do you think? And for blasphemy, you are deserving of death. So if you're reading the Ten Commandments, that's what it is. So, Shabir, just get out of here, seriously. You're just yakking nonsense. It's a surprise that uh, Islamic scholars don't really have your head, really. 
seriously. It's not. Uh, I don't take him as my scholar, but uh, to say that this man, after having studied uh, first... Here he's talking about Bart Ehrman. He says he doesn't want to take him as a scholar. Here, again, Shabir just shows his inconsistency. So he just wants to agree with, supposedly agree with things which agrees with Shabir. But he wants to disagree with Bart Ehrman on certain places where he doesn't agree with him. Seriously. <laughs> and that's the same ball game he's playing with the Quran. He's, he's thrown the Quran out of the window right now. For so many years, after having written so many books, books which are being uh, studied as course material uh, in universities, you're saying this man does not know what he's talking about? Uh, I, I don't think that that's a humble statement at all, Anthony. Um, a sin problem in the Old uh, Testament, uh, you say that it is there. But but it, it's, it's, it's not that the Old Testament writers or speakers are saying, but you know what, we need somebody to die for our sins. And as for the passages which you are citing from Isaiah, he will justify the many. Well, these are servant songs which have been identified. Now he goes again with that stupid argument saying that... Uh... The servant which was mentioned in Isaiah, it's actually Israel. It's, it's, it's not an individual. And this has been refuted. These are just objections which rabbinic Jews come up, which is their own stupid interpretations. For example, Tovia Singer, and he's just regurgitating those objections. There are many places where there are two servants. One is the nation of Israel, and one is an other servant who is going to redeem the nation of Israel and the entire world identified by Bernard Doom. Uh, and, and these songs have been interpreted variously. Some people think that the servant in these songs are, are uh, the, the, ser the servant is actually the people of Israel. Yeah, there you go. He wants to claim that it's the people of Israel, but there are two different servants. One is the nation of Israel and one is Jesus Christ. Identified in some of the songs as an individual. Whereas, uh, some others said that, okay, it's some other individual. Here he goes. He's like going with the scholars. He's going with these scholars over here who themselves can't agree on what the interpretation is. Seriously. <laughs> Does he himself know what he's smoking and what he's yakking about? Stick, be consistent and just stick to one position, man. Seriously. Uh, but, but you know, to, to say that this means that it is Jesus to come in the future, no. And especially if you say that that person is God, because how did the, the interpreters of the Old Testament uh, come to think that it would have been somebody else, like the prophet Jeremiah or Hezekiah? Um, you know, how could uh, even in Acts of the Apostles, the Ethiopian is asking uh, Philip, uh, was, the, was the writer talking about himself or about somebody else? How could it even be a question if this is clearly about God who had to come and die for the sins of the world and then resurrect from the dead? Everybody knows that Isaiah didn't do that. How could the, the Ethiopian even have this question in his mind? Uh, they, they, they better understand. Because it's a prophecy, you dumbass. That's why he just wanted to know, has this prophecy come to pass? If it's been fulfilled, so was the prophet talking about himself? Come on, man, seriously. This guy was trying to interpret prophecy. What an idiot. Understanding of all of this dynamic is that Christians, thinking about the death of Jesus, they saw this as a problem and they wanted to come up with a solution. It was a problem in search of a solution. Where what do you mean by a problem in search of a solution? Seriously, <laughs> not even the disciples thought that he would die. They only began to understand Jesus's words after he after he had died and he had risen again. <laughs> there are so many instances when Jesus talks about his death, but the but the disciples never understood what he was talking about. For them, the death was a shocker. And why would uh, eleven former cowards? who just uh, see their master dying, humiliating that, be in hiding, and then suddenly come out, believing he's alive, going all over the world, and then getting beaten, getting killed, getting imprisoned, getting their hands cut off, and just dying really violent death. Seriously, come on. <laughs> to, to, to spread this lie that it turned the ancient world upside down, it turned the Roman Empire upside down. Seriously. Uh, usually, there is a pro there is a problem, uh, and and uh, and then uh, uh, somebody comes up with the solution. In in this case, uh, the, uh, the Christians had it uh, resolved, uh, reversed. They they thought about the death of Jesus, and they said, "Okay, let's make this the solution." Now, what is the problem?
And there he goes with the conspiracy theory. This so-called conspiracy theories have been long been refuted seriously. Problem. Then they come up with this idea of this great sin problem. And then to solve the problem, they came up with answers, like Jesus died as a ransom for the sinners. But think about ransom terminology. Ransom terminology implies that there's somebody who's held captive, and then the price is paid for them. So if Jesus is that price that is paid to get everybody released, who is he paying it to? Is he paying it to the devil? So is the devil on equal bar bargaining terms with God? Muslims would not accept that because for Muslims, God is the absolute power that, you know, the v devil can be snuffed out at God's uh, simple command. Uh, God okay, okay, now I'll come to that. The devil can be snuffed out at God's simple command. So now let's see what the Quran has to say about that. <laughs> uh, which was it? Okay, so here we go. So this is a long one. It is Quran chapter 7, Quran chapter 7, verses 11 to 35. All right. So let's see. And we created you. This is again Allah talking in the plural, so called majestic plural, quote unquote majestic plural, when we fashioned you. Then we said unto the angels, Adore Adam, and they adored. Save Iblis, who was not of those who did adore, said he, What hinders thee from adoring when I, ad when I adore, adore you? He said, I am better than Adam. This is Satan talking to Allah. Thou hast created me from fire, and him you have created out of clay. So he's saying that you have created Adam from mud, but I have created from fire, therefore I am higher than him. Said he, then go down, therefore, what ails thee that thou should be... Okay, fine, I'll just read a simpler translation. He said, then go down hence. It is not for you to show pride here, so go forth. So over here, Allah is telling to Satan, so you go down. You don't have to show pride here. Then why didn't Allah just simply whack Satan off in like one punch just now what Shabir was saying? Seriously, <laughs> seriously, why didn't Allah do that? Come on, Shabir, be consistent. This is your Quran. He said, reprieve me till the day when they are raised. So, so here, Satan is asking Allah, please spare me, Allah, until the day of the resurrection. Allah said, okay, Satan, you are of those that are reprieved. So you are, you are spared until the day of the resurrection. Oh my gosh, why is Allah waiting until the day of the resurrection to spare Satan? Like according to Shabir's own stupid logic. He just destroyed himself again, claiming that he's a Quranist or a Quran Hindi Muslim. Now, now see over here. Now this is Satan saying to Allah. Now Iblis said, now because Allah, that is you, Allah, have sent me astray, verily I shall work and I shall lurk and ambush for them on on your right path. Oh boy! So now Satan is blaming Allah. Allah, you sent me astray. <laughs> you sent me astray. So I am going to lurk in ambush on people on your right path. So if people are going to take the right path, I'm going to lurk in ambush. So Satan here is making a deal with Allah. He is on bargaining power with Allah. And that's what he was talking about. Is God in, in the same bargaining power as Satan? But over here, your Quran says that. Your Quran says that. Come on. <laughs> then I shall come them from them. <laughs> then I shall come upon them from before them and from behind them and from their right hands and from their left hands. And you, Allah, will not find most of them beholden unto you. So here Satan is making a deal with Allah. It looks like that. Then Allah said, Go forth from hence, degraded and vanished. As for much of them as follow you, Satan, surely I will fill hell with all of you. So here. Allah is okay with Satan doing all this. So he said, yeah, go Satan, do whatever you want. And for all those who follow you, I will find hell with all of you. I'll fill hell with all of you. And unto man, he says, O Adam, inner it, I mean, dwell you and your wife in the garden and eat from whence you will. But come not nigh this tree, lest ye become wrongdoers. So over here, that's again the Genesis story coming over here. They are Allah talking to the fake Adam and Eve in this garden, which is supposedly in heaven and not on earth. 
not to eat from the tree. If they eat from the tree, they'll become wrongdoers. But say they are talking about wrongdoing over here. So technically speaking, Shabir was saying that other people on other planets could also sin. But here Allah is clearly saying that you are going to sin if you are going to eat of this certain tree in the garden. Then you become wrongdoers and then you sin. So again, Shabir has shot himself in the foot using his own Quran. What a liar. And then Satan whispered to them that he might manifest unto them that which was hidden from them of their shame. And he said, Your Lord Allah forbade you from this tree only lest you should become angels or become the immortals. Now, this is another mistake in the Quran. So Satan is basically telling them, your Lord has only prohibited you from this tree. That is, you become angels or lest you become immortals. But as far as I, as far as I know, Genesis 2 and Genesis 3 tell me they are talking about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God forbade Adam and Eve from eating that tree. He didn't say anything about the tree of life. But here Satan is telling them, uh, if you eat from the tree of life, you will become immortals like angels. So this is the reverse being applied over here. Seriously? <laughs> Just imagine Shabir believes in a book which has got all this crap perversion of the Bible. And on top of that, he even rejects the book where he wants to debate people <laughs> and then claims that he's Quran only. Talk about consistency. Lying charlatan. And, and Satan swore unto Adam and Eve, truly I am for you a sincere advisor. So he's saying that I'm telling you people the truth. So he led Adam and Eve onto delusion, that is sin. And when they traced it, their tree, they got embarrassed. They were naked. Their shameful parts got revealed to them. So they took to stitching upon themselves leaves of the garden. And the Lord called unto them, did not I provide you from this tree and say to you, verily Satan is for you a manifest foe. Now, this is something else which is not that in the Bible. God never told them that Satan is a foe. But over here, Allah clearly warns them that Satan is a foe. They said, Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if thou dost forgive us, have mercy upon us. We shall surely be among the lost. Said Allah, get you down, each of you, an enemy to each. In the earth, a sojourn, that is their exile, shall be yours and enjoyment for a time. So, in other words... He cast Adam and Eve out of heaven onto the earth, saying that you guys will be an enemy to each other, to Satan. There in the earth you shall live, and therein you shall die, and there you shall be brought forth. So technically, Allah is throwing them into earth, but according to the Bible, the Garden of Eden is, is on the earth itself. So, children of Adam, we have sent down on you a garment to cover your shameful parts and feathers and the garment of God-fearing that is better, that is one of God's signs, happily they will remember. Children of Adam, let not Satan tempt you as he brought, you, brought your parents out of the garden, stripping them of their garments to show them their shameful parts. Seriously. <laughs> so, technically, that he's saying that Satan... Tempted their parents, uh, tempted their parents, and that Adam and Eve were actually clothed in that garden, and uh, and then and then because they sinned, they got stripped naked. Seriously, man, the Quran is just a book full of porn. Surely he sees you here and strive from where you see them not. We have made the Satan's the friends of those who do not believe, and whenever they commit an indecency, they say we found our fathers practicing it, and God has commanded us to do it. Say, God does not commit indecency. What do you say concerning God? Such things as you know not. Say, my Lord has commanded justice. Set your faces in every place of worship and call on him, making your religion sincerely his as he originated and so you will return. Now over here. Now here, Allah's predestination. As he originated you, so you will return. A part he guided, that is a part of creation of men he will guide, and a part justly disposed to error. So a part Allah will mislead. And they have taken Satan's for friends instead of God and think that they think they guided, think them guided. Oh, seriously. So technically, I am misguided according to Allah because I'm speaking against Allah. People who have left Islam are, in, for example, are also misguided. Because uh, Allah misguided Satan, he's misguided the wrongdoers. So I'm just thinking like, 
Should Allah be worshipped more according to Islam or should Satan be worshipped more according to Islam? By the look of it, Satan is like seeming to be a more likable character in Islam. <laughs> if you get what I mean. <laughs> Children of Adam, take your adornment at every place of worship and eat and drink, but be you not prodigal. He loves not the prodigal. Say, who has forbidden the ornament of God which he has brought for his servants and the good things of his providings? These on the day of resurrection shall be exclusively for uh, shall be exclusively for those who believed in this present life. So he distinguished the signs for a people who know. Okay. So here again, so children of Adam, I'll just go down to verse 35 of chapter 7. If there should come to you messengers from among you relating to you my signs, then whosoever is God-fearing and makes amends, no fear shall be on them, neither shall they sorrow. So from these verses, we see that it's only human beings who commit wrong. Allah is not interested in aliens. Allah is not talking about other planets. This conversation is between Satan, Allah, and human beings and their children. And he's talking about him sending messengers to save them and warn them every now and then. So tell me, Shabir, I don't know what's... What brand of Islam is Shabir preaching right now, even if it is Islam? Let's have a look. There were some other interesting verses. I think I've taken you across this one. Then, yeah, just another one. Just sh shoot Shabir in the foot. That is verse 359. Verily, the likeness of Isa, Jesus, before Allah is the likeness of Adam. He created him, Adam from dust. Then he said to him, be, and he was. So again, he's just talking about Adam being created from dust and just defeats, throws Shabir's evolutionary biology out of the window. Okay. We'll just come to one more. You more actually. So coming to this one. Again. Shabir is talking about pre-scientific views. And when <coughs> thy Lord, and remember, when your Lord brought fruit from the children of Adam, from their loins, their seeds, or from Adam's loin, his offspring, and made them testify to themselves, saying, Am I not your Lord? They said, Yes, we testify. But lest you should say on the day of resurrection, Verily, we have been unaware of this. So technically speaking, why should there be a day of resurrection for man if Shabir is talking about alien planets and all these things and whatnot? It really doesn't make sense. <laughs> and here again, it is Allah who has created you from a single person, Adam, and then he has created from his wife Eve. This is Quran uh, chapter 7, verse 189, in order that he might enjoy the pleasure of living with her. Here, so technically speaking, according to the Quran, a uh, woman was created for man's pleasure when he had sexual relations with her. There, there you go. This is how perverted it is. She became pregnant and she carried it, carried about it lightly. When the pregnancy became heavy, they both invoked Allah, their Lord, saying, If you give us a sali, good in every aspect, child, we shall indeed be among the grateful. But when he gave them a sali that is good in every aspect, child, they ascribed partners to him, Allah, in that which he has given to them. That is, when Allah had provided them to him, to Adam and Eve, a good child, they decided to commit shirk by having partners with Allah. And high be Allah exalted above all that they ascribe as partners to him. <laughs> uh, I was see Adam and Eve, you know, being, say, practicing polytheism. Seriously, did they do that? Then why are they prophets? Why is Adam a prophet if uh, they practice polytheism? Seriously. This is seriously a problem here. It's Shabir's theology, so-called theology. Do they attribute as partners to Allah those who created nothing, but they themselves are created? So, okay, now let's finish. Him God off doesn't here. have to give his son, if he had one, uh, to the devil to get let the people go free. And, uh, or do you say that he the ransom is paid to God? In which case, uh, God. I'll go to the end of the debate. Now, this is the biggest punchline. This is the biggest punchline. After Shabir Ali has lied through his teeth, destroyed the Quran, 
place this trust on the scholars and said all kinds of nonsense. See what he says in the end. See what he says in the end. Let's would be the bad him. guy holding everybody uh, ransom. And uh, yeah, according to your Quran, Allah is the bad guy holding everybody ransom. I just read that out. If you say that God must get his pound of flesh or pint of blood before he forgives the people, where is the forgiveness? Because if he gets uh, in the last analysis, even though people were reticent about receiving Paul because he had formerly said, how could he be holy? I just want to go to Shabir's concluding remarks. Let's see. I think it's one hour, 18 or one minute, 19 the mark, roughly. Point of the virgin birth. He was Try to do good works. You believe in God. If you fail. Yeah. Finally, folks, uh, as we come to our end, the end of our two debates. Okay. So now listen. Now this is the punchline. We have two paradigms before us. One is the Quranic paradigm. Uh, you try to do good work. You believe in God. If you fail, God will forgive you in the end. Yeah, try to seek forgiveness. Try to repair your wrongs. If you harm somebody, try to repair what you have done to them uh, to the best of your ability and uh, rely on God for his uh, ultimate uh, forgiveness. On the other hand, uh, the Christian view announced by Anthony or you know, elaborated by him uh, shows basically that uh, you rely on Jesus to die for your sins. And without the death of Jesus, you're, you cannot be forgiven. But then in the end, you still have to do the good works and you still have to seek the forgiveness of God. And uh, the world has not changed after Jesus uh, died for our sins. We were told that, uh, you, you know, because of Adam's sin, we were driven out of the garden. But then uh, Jesus... Yes, you were driven out of the garden. Even your Quran says that. <laughs> And, and God agreed with Satan to actually do this. I mean, your God, Allah, actually agreed with Satan to do this. He misled Satan as well. Just died, and, and we should have gone, gone back into the garden, but we're, we, we haven't. And I For the record, Shabir doesn't believe in the second coming of Jesus. Most Muslims believe in that, according to him. He's kind of taken some heretical views about Jesus, heretical with respect to Islam. He's taken a mix of the Ahmadiyya position, a mix of the Mutazalite position, and a mix of God knows what, the Quran only. And yet he doesn't agree with any of them <laughs> consistently. He just makes up his own crap over here, like you're saying over here. <laughs> like he just... He rejected the Quran, just threw it out of the window, rejected authoritative interpretations of the Quran made by the Tafsir's views on Paul. He's just yakking his own nonsense, and suddenly he's become a naturalist. Come on, Shabir. I mean, your arguments would sound more credible if you had become if you had converted to atheism. Then I'll really take you quite seriously. You're a joke and a charlatan. Anthony says, but you know, that will take a long time. But the fact is that it hasn't even uh, begun. It's, uh, how much more time do I have? Do I have another minute, Karm? One minute. Oh yeah, I should have started at the one hour 19 mark. This is the punchline. Yeah, okay. So so that's, a, that's to me a problem. Yes, uh, I believe in Jesus, but I believe in the real Jesus. And to know the real Jesus, we have to go to the Prophet Muhammad on whom be peace because his revelation is given to us fresh by God. His revelation, the Quran, was given to us fresh by God, and you just rejected the revelation. You call Muhammad a liar. You call the Quran, Quran a fake book by just what you said. You call Allah a liar. Or are you saying you know better than Allah? You know better than Muhammad. Seriously, why are you still a Muslim? Or are you the last prophet, Prophet Shabir Ali, whom we are also should be expecting to give us the final revelation? You just abrogated what Muhammad said and appealed to scholars who themselves can't agree on each other. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, uncorrupted. Uh, whereas when Uncorrupted, yeah. I read from your uncorrupted revelation, the Quran, and, and just proved that you are a liar, a fake, a charlatan, who is not even a Muslim. Please. I'm just kind of like seriously wondering, you should seriously pray for this guy. Otherwise, he's just, God knows what's, what's going to happen to him. Either some Muslimin will just come and God knows maybe take his head for saying all this nonsense. Or if that doesn't happen, he has to face God on Judgment Day. Please, Shabir. <laughs> this is like seriously demonic influence. When we refer to Paul, some of his letters are disputed, written by other people after him, and he himself is disputed. We can't be sure that he was a genuine disciple of Jesus.
I just showed you that Paul, according to your scholars, your early scholars, that he was a genuine disciple of Jesus. There are so many tafsirs written over here about this. <laughs> and you're going against your scholars, your own religion, and you're appealing to modern people, tell me, and going against your own book. <laughs> Lying charlatan. And even if we say James, but that letter credited to James is, uh, according to Paula Fredrickson, uh, is not his. Somebody else wrote that. Again, he's just, you know, catching a scholar's view that somebody else wrote that. Seriously, how could he say that somebody else wrote that? Because that's the only thing written by James. You have got nothing to compare. So what people end up making in the Bible is they end up making things like the Revelation or, say, the Apocalypse. The last book in the Bible was not written by John the Apostle. It was written by another John because they want to compare the writing style of the Gospel of John and the first letter of John. They agree that the first letter of John and the Gospel of John was written by, could have been written by John the Apostle, but Revelation was written differently. I disagree with the scholars' views. That is all nonsense. But when you're talking about James, James has only written one, ep one epistle. So what are you comparing it against? Another work of James just to say that this was written by James or not written by James? There's only one book in the Bible written by James. So you have got nothing to compare, compare it against. Seriously. <laughs> That's another stupid argument. Uh, and so it's not that so much that I believe in these scholars as I believe in God, but I have more confidence in the scholars than in my own abilities. <laughs> he has more confidence in the scholars than in his own ability. Why can't you say you have more confidence in the scholars than in your own prophet, your own God, your own Quran? Because that's exactly what you have done in this debate, Shabir. Seriously. And you got to respect this guy. Get out of here. And by the way, I just need to show you guys a fact in, in case you guys don't know. You know Veritas Forum? They actually promote this guy. They actually promote this guy, Shabir Ali, Veritas Forum. This is like a Christian site which has some Christian apologists and Christian writers there. Veritas Forum. I'll just post this over here. Come on. They actually promote this guy. Like, tell me with friends like these, who needs enemies? If you guys are donating to Veritas Forum and all, please stop. And over here, they actually have a link to his YouTube channel. If some uninformed Christian, if some uninformed Christian just clicks on this link and goes there, fine. They're just selling themselves to their devil. And Veritas Forum is promoting this. And it's called as Let the Quran Speak. That's a Shabir's YouTube channel. But according to me, his YouTube channel, Let the Quran Speak, it's not Let the Quran Speak. It, it's Let Shabir Speak. <laughs> That's what he does. He just acts his own nonsense to defend the Quran and Islam and just comes up with his own head cannon. And when he can't give an argument to defend the Quran, like all Muslim apologists, he starts, you know, projecting that weakness on the Bible and he starts attacking the Bible. Demonic activity, nothing more. That's the work of Satan from the very beginning, attacking the word of God, misrepresenting the word of God, twisting the word of God. The first temptation itself was say twisting the word of God by saying that you won't die if you eat from the tree of good and evil. You will become like God. That was the first thing. The attack on the family and attack on the word of God. These two things. Now, how is the attack on the word of God happening? Liberal scholarship, scientists, so-called scientists, evolution, evolutionists, oh, sorry, evolutionists, all these guys, and uh, who else to count? Yeah, these modern lib liberal biblical scholars attacking the word of God, saying this was not written by that, the, the, this thing was compiled, this thing was man-made, and all this nonsense. It's just Satan's same mode of operation, the same modernist operandi he's been, you know, applying all the way since Adam and Eve. Attacking the word of God and attack on the family. What's attack on the family? You can see that everywhere. LBGTQ, open relationships, divorce, infidelity, all these things. And it just destroyed the family. It's just destroying governments. It's destroying the nation. And people just want to 
reject the word of god because of all these scholars and all this nonsense it's just satan it's just satan's demonic power just working throughout the ages but fear not our god is above satan infinitely above satan and it seems that uh, um anthony has more confidence in himself than in these uh, great scholars that- <laughs> Shabir, please speak for yourself. Anthony has more confidence in himself than his great scholars. By looking at <laughs> looking at everything, looking at the Quran, looking at your Islamic scholars, it seems that Shabir, you have more confidence in yourself than your Prophet Muhammad, than your Islamic scholars, than your God Allah, than in your book Quran. <laughs> You're just a whitewashed tomb. That's the difference. Nice. And I hope that people will have confidence in scholars or at least read scholars more widely. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, sure, man. I'll take your word for it. And then make up their minds. Thank you all. I enjoyed. Yeah, I've already made up my mind. I hope you guys have been blessed and made up my yes, mind. Let's do it. Again. Yeah, I enjoyed this too, Shabir. Uh, I'm more than happy to do this again. Sweet. Just stop sharing, and uh, I hope you guys were edified during the session. I hope you guys were blessed, and uh, please keep me in your prayers. Keep this ministry in your prayers, and let's ask the Lord, our God, our Triune God, to keep us free from sin, to keep us free from the fleshly struggles we have every day. And Lord, please help us, protect us, keep us safe. We pray for the people being persecuted due to Islamic persecution, due to communist persecution, due to secular persecution, due to Hindu persecution all over the world. And uh, we pray that God raises up more godly pastors, evangelists, apologists, priests and bishops to do as well, rather than all these fakes we have all these wolves we have posing as shepherds in our many churches. Thank you so much, all of you. May God bless you all. Amen. Catch you guys later, God willing.